G'day everyone! Now that the bus roof painting is all finished I can get back to working on the inside of the bus and this week I am moving into the very back section of the bus where my bathroom and laundry area is going to go. So if I come right to the back of the bus this here is the area that I'm talking about. So it's not a lot of room, it's basically just the area that I have left between my fridge and the very back wall of the bus here. And it's only about 650 mil wide across here. So it's not huge, but it's plenty big enough for what I need. So on this side, so this is the driver's side, I'm going to have a vanity sink and there'll be some storage built in behind the sink there and a mirror and so on. And then underneath the sink will be my toilet. I have a nature's head composting toilet that I'm going to be putting in the bus and it will fit under the sink and I'll build it on a slide so that it actually pulls out from underneath when I want to use it. And then on this side of the room there'll be a washing machine with some built-in storage above it and there'll also be on this side of the washing machine some more storage which will include some hanging space for my clothes. So this will be basically a laundry wardrobe storage area. Now there's a few challenges that I have with this area. First of all there are a lot of curves so the walls of the bus angle in in the corners there's like three different angles the roof is curved um, the even this back part of the roof here so kind of angles in so there's a lot of angles and curves to deal with um, and as you can see I've tried to do my framing to sort of provide some straight anchor points so that I can put the wall cladding and things on. On this side I've already clad this back wall here because you'll actually see a lot of this wall especially the section above bench height so I wanted to make it look nice and also there's limited space behind the wall here for attaching studs so having the cladding in place even though there'll be some parts of it hidden means that I've just got some extra um, meat I guess that I can attach my cabinets into and then the other issue I have in this back section is behind these grey covers in the corners is where my tail lights are and I need to be able to access that from time to time if I have to replace a bulb or there's some is other issues with the tail lights so I need to make sure that whatever I'm building in this area I keep access to those tail lights free and of course the other thing I have to deal with in this area is underneath the floor here on either side will be a water tank so this side the passenger side there'll be a fresh water tank and on the driver's side is where my grey tank's going to go so also behind here I need to allow space for uh, water pipes and um, grey water waste and things to go through the floor and I'll also in this section have the vent for the toilet that'll be going out through the floor so there's a lot of things I have to kind of fit in and make room for but I think I've finally got a layout that I'm happy with so I can start building so my job for today is to make a start on building the vanity cabinet and as usual I have a highly technical drawing that I'll be building from <laughs> hopefully this gives you some idea of what I'm going to be making so this is kind of a side on view as if you were standing basically where the fridge is looking towards the rear of the bus now this bottom section here should be fairly straightforward to build it's just a nice square cabinet that'll be about 900 millimeters high so sort of standard bench height and my sink will sit down into that so underneath here is where the toilet will go so it will slide out this way towards the hallway and there'll be a shelf above the toilet and some of that space in this shelf area will be taken up with the waste from the sink and the pipes from the taps etc but there will be some space around that for some storage under the sink and then above this behind the sink there'll be just a little bit like a narrow uh, cabinet at the back of the sink so there'll be a mirror a door with a mirror on the front here and there'll be some shelves inside here that I can store toiletries just small sort of lightweight things in there this bit here is going to be the tricky part to build because on the wall behind here there's not a lot of places I can uh, you know there aren't sort of many studs or anything in the wall that I can securely attach a frame to and also the wall starts to angle in and curve at the top here 
sort of above bench height. So it's a little bit tricky. My plan is to build this main cabinet first and then this built-in cabinet at the back here I'll build as a separate section later on. And like all the other cabinets in the bus, I'm just going to be using this 42 by 19 millimeter pine, which is pretty lightweight, but more than strong enough for what I need. The other bonus with this is that at Bunnings, I can get these 1.2 meter lengths of this stuff for less than $2 each. So it's super cheap. So I've just noticed something as I was measuring up to make the cabinet frame um, that I'm actually not going to be able to build a straightforward four-sided cabinet frame in this corner and I'll show you why. So this is what I'm talking about. I'm going to have one side wall of the cabinet attaching to this fridge wall here and the other side attaching to this wall. You can see where I've got this piece of timber just sitting here. That's roughly about the height that the cabinet will be. Now the thing that I've noticed is if I just build a square four-sided cabinet frame, the corner, the back corner on this side I would need to have you know another stud sitting here which is no good because I need to be able to access these clips and be able to pull that cover off if I want to get to the tail lights. Now I could just take that cover completely off and just have this open like to the inside of the bus but it looks a bit crappy having the cover on just makes helps to protect that area keeps it looking nice and neat so I want to keep that on so it means that I can't just build a standard four-sided cabinet frame I think what I'm going to have to do is build it in situ in sections so I can build this side wall and attach it to here. This side wall I'm only going to be able to come out as far as here like I can put another stud uh, going there and then the back wall the frame can only come as far as here so it'll basically be like a four-sided cabinet frame with uh, one corner missing and I'll be able to attach each of those three sections to the walls um, and then once I put the cross braces on top which will be above the height of this cover here that will help to secure it all. Just another one of those things you've got to make some adjustments uh, when you're building a bus it's not as straightforward as if you're in a house. the cabinet frame here will secure onto the fridge wall here so I've got plenty of meat to screw into here and um, I'll be able to screw it into the studs that I've got on the back wall here um, I can screw it into this one along the floor and I can also screw it into there so that will be um, super secure once I've done all that Okay, well that's the main part of the cabinet frame in. So I just ran another piece um, from this section here to the back so I could cross brace it all. And it's pretty secure in there so I'm happy with that. Once I work out the height of the shelf above the toilet, I can come and put a couple more pieces in under there. I can do that later on, there's enough room to work in there. And this gives you some idea of what it's going to look like. So this is the sink sitting roughly in position. I actually picked up this sink secondhand on Gumtree ages ago and came with the tap as well. I'm not sure if the tap still works, but <laughs> hopefully it will. And this should clean up all right. It's stainless steel, so it's actually quite lightweight for a sink compared to like an ordinary ceramic basin. So that's good and should be nice and easy to keep clean in the bus as well. So that's sitting roughly where the sink's going to go and you can see my nature's head toilet has plenty of space under there um, 
you can see there's heaps of room for the sink waste and the tap pipes and so on to come down through there and I'll still have a little bit of storage in here on either side of that once I put this shelf in and the idea is that the toilet will be on a slide and it will slide out this way into the hallway so I'll have plenty of leg room when I want to use it I can just put a curtain uh, across here if I need to um, yeah so just have to work out the details of that sliding mechanism now all right guys it's another day and I'm going to continue working on the bathroom vanity cabinet today so this is as far as I got yesterday just the basic bottom section of the cabinet frame done uh, so now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to clad the top section of this wall here uh, which will be visible above bench height and then once I've done that I'm going to make a start on building the built-in section at the back there. So that side wall is done. I'm going to leave this piece at the very top until later on because I actually need to do this in a way that will allow me to take it off if I need to in the future because behind here is the bolts for um, that are securing the fridge in and so if I ever want to get this fridge out I need to be able to get to um, the nuts on those bolts. You can see here I've actually cut the tongue off this piece here and so that means when I put the next piece on top, it's not actually joining into, locking into this piece. So I'll just be able to unscrew it and pull it out. Um, and I also don't want this piece going all the way to the back wall. Again, because if my cabinet's coming up to here, I need to be able to get this out. So what I'm going to do is build the cabinet in and then this last piece will just go up to as far as the front of the cabinet. But I can do that later on. So now I have to work out how I'm going to do this awkward little cabinet at the back here. Well, it's taken me most of the day trying to work out how to do this blooming cabinet. You, you would think something so simple would be easy, but just with all the angles in this corner and the lack of really good attachment points is just making it tricky. Um, but anyway, I think I've finally worked out how I'm going to do it, or at least I've half worked it out <laughs> enough that I've made a start on it and I'm just going to make up the rest as I go along. All right, and I've also changed my mind a little bit about where I want the sink positioned. So before I was going to have it kind of centered in the middle of this space, um, but now I've decided I'm actually going to put it all the way up against this wall because where it was before sitting in the middle, I kind of just had this little thin strip of bench space either side that wasn't really very useful. If I push it all the way up against the wall this way, it gives me a nice little bit of bench space there that I can put things on. So, you know, like if I'm doing my hair, because I have hair now, I have to think of these things. Um, you know, I can rest my hairbrush and clips and so on. Um, you know, if I'm putting sunscreen or whatever on, there's somewhere to put the sunscreen bottle. You know what I mean? Like it just gives me a little bit of usable bench space there. I still have plenty of elbow room uh, across this way, so that's not an issue. So now the cabinet is going to be going here so basically directly behind the sink the other reason I decided to do it this way was because I actually want to leave some space in this corner here for power cables to run down so on the opposite side here this is my electrical bay so this is where uh, my batteries and inverter and everything will be housed and so all of my power cables will be coming up from here and for the wires that need to cross to the other side of the bus the cables are going to be running across here which will be inside like a cabinet area and then across in this part of the back of the bus here up near the ceiling and then I need to be able to get cables in down like behind the wall cladding here down here under the bench so they can run along and you know power 
power points and my water heater and, and lights and everything on this side of the bus. So I need to make sure I've got plenty of space to run the cables down through there. So doing it this way just gives me that nice little um, bit of extra space there. And it also means that, you know, I, I've got space now for a little hand towel and things on the wall here too. So anyway, that's why I've changed my mind about where to put the sink. So the cabinet is going here. Um, and you can see I've made two side pieces. So what I did was I cut a template out of cardboard. I'll take this piece out and show you. It's a bit hard to see. Um, you can see it's kind of angled at the top. It's got a notch cut out um, to match this stud here. And so I cut two of those. So that just... Sorry, it's a bit awkward to film in this tiny little space, but you can see I've got one piece that fits over there and I've got another piece um, here that will form um, the other side of the cabinet. Now this piece is easy because I can screw it straight into this wall. This one here is a little bit trickier because I've really only got anchor points in the floor of the cabinet here um, and I can put a bracket up here to attach it into this stud which will hopefully be enough. This timber that I've used for these is actually um, old timber shelving that I bought from Ikea years ago. It's, um, I think it's some sort of pine or it could be birch. I'm not really sure. It is super lightweight. Um, but it was just the only timber left that I had that were big enough pieces to cut this shape so that's why I've used it. Now the problem with this is it's only 15 millimeters thick so I'd like it to be a little bit thicker for you know screwing in my hinges and things so I'm just going to put a couple of extra pieces on the back here so that I've got a bit more meat for those screws and I also want to clad this little bit of the corner here so I'm also going to have another piece attached to this that will allow me to screw into this way. Okay so I've just put this block of pine here it's screwed down into this timber here so it's really secure and you can see on my uh, side piece of the cabinet here um, I've just put some extra pieces here just in with pocket hole screws and now if I push this up into place there I can screw this into that block at the bottom here so that'll be really secure on the bottom and then I can put a little bracket here to screw this into this stud so that should be now fairly secure once I've done that and then these pieces that I've pocket hold onto this side here gives me something to screw into when I come to clad this little corner here Okay, so I've got it all secured in there now. So this piece here is screwed into um, this wall here and it's screwed into this back stud with this bracket. And this piece here, not sure if you'll be able to see, but it's screwed into that block that I put on the floor down there um, and also by this bracket here into the back stud. And it's all really secure. So I'm happy with that. And I've put this piece in here um, because the the bathroom tap will come sort of fairly high up above the bench top here and so I want to make sure when I put the door on that it's well clear of the tap so I've built this up and just use some nine mil ply to put some shelves in there makes it a little bit awkward for this bottom shelf space because of the high front that I have to put on it but it's actually perfect for storing rolls of toilet paper and things so I'll be able to store quite a bit of toilet paper in there and it's actually quite easy to get out of that and I've got a couple of other shelves for toiletries so quite happy with that now what I'm going to do is I've just got some pieces cut from nine mil ply and I'm going to put them on the front just to um, create a nice face for the front of the cabinet and then I'm going to put the door on. Okay, well, it's a little bit rough, but it needed it up a little bit. And once this is painted, uh, hopefully it'll look fine. 
So that's ready now to put the door on. But before I do that, I want to put the bench top and the splash back on. And of course, like most things in this bus, this isn't a nice square space. <laughs> it's actually pretty even this way. So it's 456 mil from the back to the edge of this wall, which is where I want to bring the bench to. So it's the same on each end there. So I'll be able to cut that width on the table saw and get it nice and even. But this back edge is about five millimeters longer than this front edge so this end here is not quite square so I'm not going to be able to cut that on my table saw I'll have to do this bit with the jigsaw and just try and get it as neat as I can Oh, that's perfect. Wow, that was a fluke. I did not expect <laughs> to get it that good the first time. All right, so now I just want to take it out because I want to attach the splash back. Uh, and I want to be able to screw that into the bench top from the back so you don't see the screws. So. Oh shit, now I can't get this out. <laughs> that is a tight fit. Alright, and I've also had to cut this end of the splash back on a little bit of an angle because of the angle of the wall here as well. So it's going to sit... Uh, in there like that it's not too bad I think that's as good as I'm going to get it so I'm not going to muck with it um, so I'm actually going to pocket hole the splash back to the bench top from the back of it um, but before I do that uh, I need to cut the hole for the sink So I've got a problem, this has actually broken here, so obviously um, this join between the two pieces of you can see there is not glued, um, so that's come apart and also there's actually a little crack there is really unfortunate so there must have been like a bit of a weakness in the panel just in that spot um, I'm hoping it'll still be okay because this piece here is going to be like resting on the supports of the cabinet um, and there'll actually be another piece along here because of the way the sink is going to go on so this will actually be sandwiched between two other pieces screwed together so I'm hoping it'll be okay I don't actually have another piece of this bench top big enough to to redo this so oh that's really unfortunate I just have to be careful that this doesn't break um, I think it'll still be all right because of where it is it's going to be fully supported um, so hopefully it'll be okay it would have been a different story if it had cracked out here um, but the rest of it looks all right okay so I've just done my best to glue this back together so I put as much glue as I could sort of get into that crack and then I've also glued these two pieces together it was a little bit tricky because um, I couldn't really pull them right apart to get the glue in there but 
I've got a fair bit of glue in there and I've just um, clamped them together. So yeah, I'm going to leave it like that for a while. Hopefully that will help. That's all I can do really. Alright, so I've got the bench top in position and it's all clamped down so now I'm going to go ahead and screw it into the cabinet. screwed in I'm actually really happy with that even this section here that broke is sitting really nicely like that glue seems to be holding okay I managed to get a screw into um, each of the pieces like around those that crack and where the break was so I think that's pretty well secured in place the sinks going to be sitting down on top of that as well which will help to hold it so I think that's okay and you can see how the sink is going to sit in there. The last job that I need to do is to put a door on the front of this cabinet. Now eventually I want to put a mirror on the front of this cabinet and I've got some ideas about how I might actually be able to build one in to the front. Um, I just have to make some inquiries about getting some glass cut to the right size. So, But anyway, that's a job for a later day. I'm just happy for now that I've got a door on there. Well, that's it. The vanity cabinet's pretty much done. Obviously, there's still a little bit of trimming up to do. I've got to paint the cabinet. Um, I need to finish cladding the walls and the ceiling and that around it. But some of that needs to wait until after I've run the electrical cables. Um, so I can do all of that later on when I'm finishing things off. But the basic framework of the cabinet is done, so I'm happy happy with that such a seemingly simple little cabinet but took me way longer than I expected to do <laughs> but anyway I guess slow progress is still progress right and if you want to see some more detail about how I make the cabinet doors then check out this video that I did of my kitchen cabinet where I showed a lot more detail about how I make the doors see you in the next video